How are all of you lovely people doing today? My name is John and welcome to another fantastic episode of the Zombie Storyline Q&A. This is a series where I take your questions about the zombie storyline and answer them. Whether it's a big, a small, or a simple question, you may be in the next episode. As always, you can either leave them down below or tweet me at JohnnyJ25 with your questions. And maybe while you're at it, drop me a follow. It is always appreciated. Without further ado though, let's begin. Today's episode will begin with a question from Lil Brad 072087 who asks, Did Peter McCain create the Ray Gun Mark III? Is that why he's in Garad? I think it's a little bit of a misconception that Peter McCain was the creator of the Ray Gun Mark III. Many people think this from this cipher found on the map Der Eisendrache. When solved, it reads Mission Log Entry 45. I'm over the site looking down through the open door. I can see a weird distortion below me like a localized Aurora Borealis. I would normally cancel the operation but we don't have time. Luckily, I've taken experimental weaponry version three that no one has seen before from my previous mission. Never say never, Peter. So the localized Aurora Borealis is most likely what we saw at the Garad Krovi intro cutscene. Peter jumps through it and he's teleported to Garad Krovi. With him is experimental weaponry version three, what we assume to be the Ray Gun Mark III. This is why people think he's the creator of it. However, he clearly says he didn't make it. He took Experimental Weaponry version 3 from his previous mission. Where that mission was is hard to say. Potentially with group 935, maybe with another group. Now, we this doesn't answer the question though of where does the Ray Gun Mark 3 actually come from? Who created this weapon? My personal belief is that the Ray Gun Mark III was made by a Russian scientist, and here's why I think this. We have a cipher from the map Zetsubo no Shima that when solved reads, Comrade, I hope these schematics reach you in time so our scientists can make use of them, for I know the Western Front is on the brink of collapse. These schematics I've stolen from Group 935 will enable us to construct our own wonder weapons, which will help us turn the tide of the war give us victory over the German pigs. I fear, however, I will not live to see this. V. This is clearly written by a Russian. You can tell just from the words and the vocabulary used in this cipher. He speaks about the Western Front, refers to the reader as comrade. This is a Russian author. And on the map Garad Krovi, we have a sign from who we believe to be Viktor Reznov. And this makes me think that because it's signed V, and the only other character we really know in the zombie storyline with the name V, this must be from Viktor Reznov, who is a Russian soldier in the Red Army. And I believe that because you can look at the Ray Gun Mark III and see a star on it, which is a red star, which is a prominent Russian symbol, that this is actually a Russian weapon. And it was made with the schematics that Viktor Reznov stole. He stole these schematics and maybe gave them to a group such as the Ascension Group, potentially a scientist like Gersh in another reality, or maybe just a member of the Ascension Group whom we've never met. And they went on to create the Ray Gun Mark III. And maybe the reason it's in Garad Krovi is because Peter McCain stole it from his previous mission, and then he teleported through the localized Aurora Borealis entered Garad Krovi, and that's why the Ray Gun Mark III is there. It was not Peter McCain who created this weapon. Based on the evidence from ciphers as well as the imagery on the gun, it had to have been created by a Russian scientist. Moving on, we're going to look at a question from Omar Tavaras, who asks, They only spoke of Gersh, but what happened to Yuri? Yeah, this is an interesting thing to think about. Despite Garad Krovi being a map set in Russia, it only features one member of the Ascension Group, Gersh. Nobody else really comes up, and why is that the case? Personally, I believe it's because Gersh is more an ethereal being while everybody else is physical. This allows him to be in more places easier. Let's listen to Gersh's dying moments to really understand this. This had better be good, Yuri. The fact that you are even in this lab again is reason enough to have you permanently removed. If you've done anything that will ruin Ned's spectacle. Do not worry. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure you won't forget it. But I can't take all the credit. If you will do me the honors. Oh, 
have I done? What have I done? What happens is that Yuri tricks him into activating the Gersh device and he gets sucked in. After that, he is this ethereal being. He is no longer physically at the Ascension group. Meanwhile, Yuri, he's still there and he realizes the mistake that he's made and after this, everything starts to go to hell at the Ascension facility. Samantha begins to creep in even further. She unleashes hordes of zombies and 115 reanimates even more dead bodies and drives the rest of the scientists at the Ascension group insane. Eventually, the place is overrun and that's why Ascension is a map littered with zombie scientists. So what happens to Yuri? Well, Yuri was most likely killed in the fallout of the Ascension group. He was a weak-minded individual and he was easily manipulated and this led to the downfall of that facility. Now Gersh, when he was sucked into the machine, was a more ethereal being after that. He was in this ethereal realm with Samantha, and Samantha was coming after him, but then our characters helped Gersh, and they released him from his torment. We even have a cipher on Zetsubo no Shima that when Saul reads, My name? Oh, my name, yes, it's Gersh. How long have I been floating? Minutes? Years? Where is now? I guess I can forgive Yuri. I quite like my new form. Hmm, where am I now? A city on fire by a river? I know this place. Finally, I'm home. So when he was released from everything, he took a new form. It's a less physical form. He kind of just floats around, and that's why we see him as this spark of light in Garad Crow V. And he's now at Stalingrad. He's back home. And the reason he's able to be there is because he's in this new, less physical form. A character like Yuri was murdered in the Ascension facility, so it wouldn't make sense for him to be at Garad Crow V. Today's episode will end with a question from Blast Gaming 5 who asks, How come they blew up the moon in the past, but they're on the moon in the future? I think there's a lot of confusion of what's going on with the moon thanks to certain viral videos. In the original timeline, Maxis's soul is sucked out into the virtual world. There, he jumpstarts his plans to open the portal to the ether and harness its power to defeat Richtofen. He employs a number of survivors to find him the mystical relics. Maxis succeeds in his plan, defeats Richtofen, and reunites with Samantha. But in the new timeline, Richtofen travels back to World War II and kills the version of himself that sends Samantha to the moon. The zombies from the second timeline attack, and Richtofen fights them off with the band of Group 935 test subjects. They turn their attention to the remainder of Group 935, which exists on the moon. In an attempt to stop them for good, they fire missiles at the moon and destroy it. Having done so, the dimensions and alternate timelines finally converge, and time continues as it is from the 1940s and on, but without a moon. And Honestly, the fact that this video is the most popular entire Zombie Storyline Explained video on YouTube is a little bit of a shame, shall I say. Anyway, I digress. Let's unravel this mess. Let's go to the original timeline. This is what we see in Black Ops 1, in which our characters do go to the moon. On the moon, Richtofen activates the pyramid, enters it, and switches bodies with Samantha. Those four characters, Samantha included, are stranded on the moon. They, as far as we know, never actually leave the moon. And then Richtofen and Maxis manipulate the transit crew and the events of Black Ops 2 unfold. This is what I'm calling the original timeline. World at War, Black Ops 1, and Black Ops 2. And then in Black Ops 3, we have a little bit of a different timeline where we're not following one linear world, we're following one group of characters as they move through many different worlds. And in each world, anything is possible. Now in The Giant, we're in a world very similar to the original timeline. Evil Richtofen had just sent away Samantha and Maxis to the moon, and when they went to the moon, what was going to happen was that Samantha would get scared, run into the pyramid, Maxis would be murdered, and then the events of Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2 would unfold again, except this is different. We now have the Origins Richtofen, who kills evil Richtofen and prevents all of that from ever happening again. So now the timeline has changed slightly. And what they do in the fallout of this is then go to Der Eisendrache. They're still in the same universe, we believe. And 
On, on this universe, Gersh is waiting for Richtofen to come to the moon while they enact the rest of their plan. Except, Richtofen is now on Derizendrach, uh, trying to retrieve the Dempsey test subject, and after they retrieve the test subject, they dismantle the rest of Group 935 by blowing up the moon. When they blew up the moon, what they did was basically make sure none of that would happen in that universe. It wasn't essentially necessary. It's not as hunky-dory as that video would make it out to be. They don't suddenly just blow up the moon and every bad thing that Group 935 does is corrected and all the timelines are corrected because, no, there's still so much more. There's a much larger picture to everything and those were just the events on one universe. And then when we went to Zetsubo no Shima, we were in a completely different universe. And when we went to Garad Krovi, we were in a universe with dragons. So things aren't that simple. When they blew up the moon in Der Eisendrache, they were blowing up a different moon than what we saw in the original timeline. And the moon still can exist in the other previous maps. That's going to wrap things up for this episode of the Zombie Storyline Q and A. If you enjoyed the video, maybe give it a like, possibly subscribe for more. I'm always covering the zombie storyline. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the next one. As always, you can leave your questions down below or tweet me at JohnnyJ25 with future questions. And maybe follow me while you're at it. Have a great day and bye.